Unfortunately, a couple times a year, we actually get egg-bound females, and sure enough, this aberrant black and white California king snake yesterday started laying, and she laid a couple eggs, and she is definitely egg-bound. You can see how she's kind of swollen here. Now, I am a little bit concerned because the anal vent is right here, and the egg is still a couple, maybe three or four ventral scales up, so I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get this egg out, but the idea is to take a probe and go right into the anal vent like this, and then apply a little bit of pressure the other way. It's gonna be a little bit difficult with this one. I don't know if we're gonna get it, and you can see the eggs are actually stacking a little bit, which is not a good sign either. That means that there's something that's blocking right here. I'm gonna just do my very best to just kinda of get the probe in here, and just kinda of feel around and see if I can't get to the egg. I know, girl, I know. So I'm going, oh, I don't know. This one might be tough. I'm not sure if there's something actually gonna be wrong with this egg or not. Oh, I can't get to the egg itself. Just gonna try it out. Just kind of put some pressure on this egg. Oh, come on, girl, you can do it. See if I can't see the egg in here. Can't find it. Come on, a little bit more pressure. Just trying to get this, but what you don't want to do is put the pressure where the overduct actually folds up on itself because then you're not going to get the actual egg out. But I'm trying to feel around and just see if I can't feel the egg itself. And I'll get to right to the end of that egg right here and really apply a bunch of pressure going through this side here. If I could get this one egg that's blocking, she'll pass the other eggs. It looks like she's got four or five eggs in here, but boy, I tell you what, this egg is really stuck, guys. This is a tough one right now. Don't know if I'm going to get it or not. So I'm starting to see the egg here, and it's really been tough because there's an overduct that's wrapped around it really hard. It's really difficult to get that egg out. It's just kind of really giving me a hard time right now. You can see it just starting to come here. Man, this is a, one of the hardest eggs I've ever had to get out. There it comes. I finally am starting to get the egg out. I've never struggled so hard to get an egg out before, but we definitely saved the oviduct. We didn't rip the oviduct at all. And sure enough, that egg came out. I tell you what, I have gotten a lot of eggs out of females over the years, and that was the most difficult egg I've ever had. I really struggled with it, but I could tell I could feel the egg through the oviduct. So listen, she still has one, two, three more eggs in her. Now, that that one is probably where the blockage was, right? Where she couldn't pass the other eggs now. Now that that egg's out, I'm hoping she can push the other three eggs out by herself. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna let her just be by herself and see if she can work these eggs down. Now, if she does work them down and can't get them out, I'm gonna to have to repeat that process three more times. But the fact is, I just wanna save this animal's life, right? This egg is no good anymore. This is a bad egg, you can see it's no good. Once they don't lay their eggs on time, the egg goes bad. So the eggs in her, I'm not worried about. I'm just worried about her life, right? So let's hope she pushes these next eggs down. Now, I don't wanna push them because that overduct can actually fold and it can actually cause a blockage here. I'm gonna let her do it on her own time over the next couple days, so I'll keep you guys up but for now, it was good to get the main blockage out. And good morning and welcome to the vlog, Reptile Army. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. The truth is, is that it's not very common for snakes to get egg bound. I mean, out of the hundreds of clutches that we produce each year, we might have one, maybe two females per year. On a bad year, we might have three. So it doesn't happen often. But again, if you can't get those eggs out and they get stuck in there, the female can go septic and actually die. So it's super important to get those eggs out. But that being said, if you have a snake that lays eggs and there's one or two eggs left, don't just start trying trying to push them out, you know? I've been doing it long enough to know the difference between an animal that just kind of got exhausted and couldn't push the eggs out and one that's gonna actually be in trouble and actually be egg bound and we need to help. So again, I never want you guys to go, oh, well, Brian did it, so I'm gonna do it. Cause you can injure the snake, you can rip an oviduct and that can even be more of a problem. But thankfully, that girl is on her way to hopefully getting the rest of those eggs out. And uh, again, not something that happens very often. It's always an exciting day when BHB produces a species we haven't produced before. So what do we have? We have an African fat tail gecko. This is our <laughs> first one ever. Isn't that crazy? And again, it's not like African fat tail geckos are super rare or anything like that, but we've never produced them and Jessica loves them. So uh, congratulations. They're so adorable. I know. They kind of look a little bit like a leopard gecko, but they're from Africa, obviously. So uh, absolutely amazing. So uh, way to go, Jessica. That was actually cool. So this is the first one. Who knows? Maybe we'll get into the African fat tail geckos now. That is absolutely <laughs> adorable. All right, guys, you know, I've got to put my hat on here. I heard a couple people said I don't look good in hats, so I'm sorry if that's the case. But I want to wear the Reptile Army hat. If you guys haven't joined the movement yet, do me a favor. Go to reptilearmy.com. 
comment down below what's your favorite shirt or apparel. We've got joggers, we've got socks, we've got backpacks, we've got all kinds of stuff like that. And I will pick two of you guys in the comments and I'll send whatever your favorite thing is. So you go to reptilearmy.com, join the movement, become a foot soldier, get out there and let's spread the word and the love of reptiles. This is how Lori takes out her aggression every single day killing flies. For those of you guys that don't know, the good and bad thing about tortoises, they're amazing, but they are definitely like farm animals, and they definitely attract flies. So there's always a bunch of flies in here, and Lori always, uh, whenever she's upset, comes here and just starts smacking them, because if she's not smacking flies, she's smacking me. <laughs> okay, 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 I'm leaving. <laughs> So Jessica, what was the end result of the egg collecting? So we got 98 good eggs and about 25 slug eggs. Okay, well not too bad. Slugs are still a little bit higher, but that'll come down over the years. Not 100 eggs, that's pretty good. Keep up the good work. Awesome. There's two things that I enjoy in life. Pulling snake eggs and chewing bubble gum. And I'm all out of bubble gum. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so with that being said, I have a clutch of eggs here that I want to pull. This is actually just a heck ghost female, and she was bred to this banana fire spinner blast. I mean, this is an absolutely cool animal. So let's go ahead and see how many eggs Mama has. And it looks like Mama has one little egg out of her clutch, which is completely fine. I'll go ahead and candle it. You know, every time they kick out an egg, I actually candle it. Interestingly enough, there used to be people that thought that if they kick the egg out, maybe the egg would go bad. Like somehow the mom knew this was gonna be a bad egg and they would kick it out. And honestly, there is a little correlation with that. That being said, I have looked at hundreds and hundreds of eggs that have been kicked out. I would say about 90% hatch rate on them, to be totally honest with you. So there's about 10% of the eggs that they kick out don't go. Now, is it because they kicked it out and the egg got rolled around and that's why it didn't hatch? Or did the mom know something? It's hard to say. Let's go ahead and see how many eggs she has in this pile here. Come on, mama. we we'll just unwind her. And it's so cool how they'll actually concave their belly to actually go right around the eggs. And there's a lot of eggs in this clutch for a relatively small girl. I am super excited about that. So let's go ahead, we'll take this egg because it's not all attached. We'll set that right in there. Again, we gotta handle this egg right here. The rest of the eggs look like they're attached, so we'll just kinda get them all in one lump here. And here we go, I tell you what, that is a nice clutch of eggs from that girl. All 100% fertile, I'm just gonna peel this one egg off because it won't. the lid won't shut. Just get that off real gentle like that. Because they're fresh, you can peel them off really easy. Get that piece of paper off and then go two, four, six, eight, ten eggs. Whenever we hit double digits on a python, I am excited. 57 days from now, get ready for that egg cutting. And for those of you that are counting, that's clutch number 23. Only about 140 more to go. Take a look at guys. This is actually Tiana. Of course, she is a Lewis Eye hybrid, so a cyclura, kind of like the rhinos, but from a different area. And she actually gave us a surprise. She did this to us last year too but uh take a look right over here what do we have here this is actually a slug egg now of course she doesn't have a boy in with her so uh they're not going to be fertile but she actually has one slug egg in here but the truth is you can see that she's definitely thinned out and usually she would have maybe three to five eggs so i'm going to try to move my girl tiana can you move over little girl Thank you, sweetheart. She just wants pets so bad. She has become such a good animal. But I wonder if there's any more eggs in here because she would normally lay quite a bit more. But the truth is, is she may have eaten them. Looked like she was trying to eat this one here. So what a trip. Now, I wanted to actually get her a male this year and try to breed her. But the thing is, you have to worry about when to put the male in. If you put the male in at the wrong time, she will actually kill the male, right? So I have to find the right time, which is really more like the fall. So I need to find a Lewis Eye hybrid male for my girl next year. So she she can actually lay good eggs because this is two years in a row that she laid bad eggs. I tell her, Tiana, you're such a good girl. I tell you, remember when I got her and she was so crazy? Look at how amazing she's become now. But listen, tell you what, that was a little bit of a surprise again. I didn't think she was going to lay eggs again. Uh, wish they were good. Wouldn't it be cute to have little baby Tianas? But uh, hey, maybe next year. And upon further inspection, there's actually another egg up here. Actually, again, another slug egg, but uh, this one's a little bit more white and stuff like that. So weirdly enough, she laid over here you can tell over here too that she must have eaten one of the eggs so what she did she probably laid four or five eggs and then ate all of them but this one and tried to eat the other one so regardless Tiana you did good you're a good girl don't worry I love her to death all right guys
guys, it's that time again. You know what time it is? It's egg time. And look at this beautiful girl right here. This is actually an apricot Pueblin milkshake and a super clean one to boot. Ooh, dog, I tell you what. We'll get her cleaned up and get her some water and we'll see how many eggs. Please let there be good eggs. All right. That is a nice clutch. Again, Pueblins typically lay anywhere between four and sometimes a giant clutch could be 10, but usually four to six is a pretty good clutch for these guys. So we've got two, four, six, right where you want it to be, six. And I tell you what, that is a clean, clean animal. So when these hatch out, they are gonna be absolute rippers. Let's take a look and see what this albino jelly brooks has for us as far as eggs go. Now, last year, she actually had one good clutch and one bad clutch of eggs. So you never know if that means the female's a little wonky or not. I could see a couple good eggs in here, so it looks like it's pretty good and take a look at how beautiful that snake is right there I mean that thing is absolutely gorgeous so we'll go ahead and get mama back in here you did such a good job mama way to go mama you did good so let's go ahead and see how many eggs looks like they're in here oh yeah it doesn't look bad at all look at that wow I tell you what looks like we've got two four six good eggs right here we'll get them set up in an egg box get them incubating hatching in 60 days you notice that about half of the package that we get always have fragile on it Probably for you because you treat things so gentle. How am I supposed to open it? Cut towards you. Yeah. Always yes. cut towards you, kids. One thing I learned in Boy Scouts: always cut towards you. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why you're not a troop leader. <laughs> All right. What do we have? No, I don't know. Here's a note. Oh my gosh. Brian and family. It is. Let's see. Deb's L. L All in one. Oh, Deb's, my glasses. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Deb's all in one sauce. It has a phone number, so I'm not going to show you her phone number. Uh, I don't know. You want that out on the internet, interwebs. You know what I mean? But so this is an all in one sauce. What is it about? Like, what do I put it on? So Barbecue? You can use it as a marinade on fish, fish. shrimp, or anything else. Can I open it? Can sure. I open it? Pizza dipping sauce. You can freeze it. Huh. Is, is this dangerous? Should I be tasting this? Like, what if someone sends me arsenic? I like it. <laughs> I like it. It tastes Dude. good. It really is good. <laughs> okay. No, it actually tastes really good. I can't remember if I washed my hands after I cleaned that case, nope, though. No, you didn't. Yeah. That's the extra oh. flavor. Okay, thanks, Dad. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, can you do me a favor? Hit this playlist right over here. You can watch a couple more videos on this side. You can subscribe to the vlog channel. It would mean the world to me. Have an absolutely wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, be kind to somebody, and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.